once again, the sound is going to be slightly different, different filming location, different camera. Uh, so this is Airwick's latest foray into the automated units that contaminate your air with aromatic pollution. So uh, let's take a look at it. This one is interesting because it's uh, an ultrasonic one. So if I take the unit out here, we have the base unit, we've got the bottle of oil, and interestingly, the oil is a very similar bottle to a previous uh, unit they had, which just blew air through a filter. It was quite odd. It blew air through a filter to clean the air, and then uh, it then aromatized it with fresh chemicals. So uh, it comes that little vial of liquid. This uh, slides off and reveals the battery compartment in the back and the bottle holder in the front. The batteries are packed in bubble wrap, which is quite an interesting approach. I wonder if that's uh, down to safety of shipping and things like that. It seems like a good idea. It also stops them rattling around inside the back of the unit. So let's uh, make sure the unit is turned off. It is. It's got multiple settings for the for the aroma level. Let's put a battery in there, and a battery in there, and a battery in there. Yeah. And we'll get the bottle of oil open, or whatever. They, they make it out that this is full of essential oils, but I doubt there's much actual essential oil, although ultimately I suppose all the purified chemical extracts are derived from essential oils in the long run, in a way. Um, so this uh, pushes in here with a slightly harder wick material than normal. It's not like the soft wick you get in other units. And when you turn this on, I don't know if you're going to see this, I may have to pause and actually put it against a dark background. Let's put my hand there and see what happens. So it lights up initially and then after a delay, it ramps up and it blows a mist. Can you see that mist? It's not very vivid. One moment, please. I'll see if I can enhance that a bit. One piece of dark velvet stolen from the Disney Corporation. And here we go. That's the vapour coming out. You can see it now. It's a fine atomised mist and it just does that for a small burst. I'm just going to remove the velvet and go back to it. Well, let's actually just do it right now. That's, that's, that seems easy enough. So, uh, it's interesting. Let's open it up. Now, it's worth mentioning that this unit doesn't just run all the time. This unit uh, will run for about eight hours before it goes into a standby mode and then it will sort of start up at the next time the following day. Uh, where is the lid for that? Mm, no, I, I've misplaced the lid for that. That doesn't matter. Uh, so, where is a screwdriver? It claims 45 days at the low setting. Whether it actually yields that uh, remains to be seen. So it's got a couple of screws in the bottom. If you hear the voice changing quite dramatically in uh, sort of the spatialness and the sort of ambience and volume, it's because I'm standing up and kneeling down. It's not a convenient position to be working at this area. Normally when I film my videos, I stand at a bench in a fixed position with the bench up quite high. But uh, in this case, it's a window. So film where you can when you're traveling. So there's two screws here, and this is where it comes apart in a manner that makes it very hard to put back together again. Uh, this, incidentally, is not the first ultrasonic atomizer for uh, air fresheners. They call them air fresheners. Air polluters might be a better description. But they do make a nice aroma, and that's why they're popular. Oh. Ready ho So what do we have? We have the atomizer module at the top. We have a circuit board at the base, and the wires are pressed into little guides to keep them neatly out of the way. So what do we have? Let's take a closer look at this circuit board. Actually, I'm going to pause and explore this in advance and then uh, see if I can get some numbers off these chips and then we'll take a closer look. One slight investigation later and here's what I've found. There is an anonymous chip, rather predictably anonymous chip, that uh, controls everything. It's probably a, a, probably a universal microcontroller, because uh, right next to it are five pins, reset, VCC, ground, and data and clock. So it's designed to be sort of like programmed in circuit. I wonder if that's because uh, they just change the software as the batch goes on, because I'm guessing the software is quite critical. This interesting little stud here is actually just a rivet that holds the uh, switch selector mechanism on. And the switch selector is a sliding switch and it's got a bridge of resistors that go between the uh, zero volt rail and the positive rail and uh, they just provide a, a sort of analog voltage back depending on the switch position. There's a little boost circuit here 
I think it's a boost circuit, which uh, has an inductor, 4.7 microhenry inductor, and that is labelled B6287, this chip here. There's also another little chip next to it, and this seems familiar. I couldn't find it at short. Look, ASHB it's got. Looks like a transistor, ASHB. Not sure, I'll have to check that up in more detail later on. Uh, the circuitry seems to drive a transistor, a fairly big transistor on this side, with an inductor for the uh, piezoelectric crystal, the piezoelectric crystal. And the piezoelectric crystal, I shall do that in a moment, uh, how it works, but it's almost as if it might have some sort of feedback because two of the pins, uh, one via a resistor here, are going back to this uh, chip. I have not got my magnifying glass, it just makes it a wee bit harder to find things. All I've got is an old Micronta microscope, which is actually just a wee bit too zoomy. I'm just going to make sure I'm still in shot here. Yes, I am. That's that's surprising. Uh, so the circuit, uh, it's all based around this. It's getting a, a rail, which it may be 5.6 volts. I saw 5V6 reference. Oh, actually, I've just seen plus 12 volts. That tells you a bit more. Okay. Oh, that might be a little voltage regulator. That might be a small voltage regulator for the chip, taking it down from a 12 volt rail. This is odd that it's boosting it up so high, but the 12 volt may make it easier to actually generate the ultrasonic uh, energy required in the, the uh, atomizer. Having said that, you think of the USB powered ones that just have the little, uh, the little eight pin chip that does everything. I get the feeling this is actually quite a complex circuit, but uh, they may have reasons for that. This also has a quartz crystal in the back for timing for that sort of daily cycle uh, on and off. I wonder how much efficiency is lost in the, the converters. I wonder how much, what the standby current is. Then again, when you've uh, depleted the batteries, when you've depleted the aroma cartridge, you put new batteries in usually. Um, so the atomizer itself, let's uh, pop that out. Let's find a screwdriver that I can pop that out with and make sure I remain in shot while I pop it out. So the atomizer is actually based on a little ring, and this is where it's very similar to a uh, Wisp. There used to be an air freshener, I think it was made by Glade, I'm not sure. And it was called Wisp, and it was the same sort of principle, but much smaller. Oh, that pops out, that's quite handy. So if I pop this apart, is it gonna come apart? Yes, it is coming apart. That reveals a spring, and when you put the uh, aroma cartridge in, the wick pushes up against this ultrasonic disc, and then there's an insulator, and then the spring sort of ring insulator here. And the ultrasonic disc has a metal disc, probably stainless steel, and in the wisp it had lots and lots of tiny holes, but this one I think it might just have one. It's very hard to see. I should look at that with the microscope, shouldn't I, since I have one? One moment, please. Okay, at the risk of uh, making the image a bit noisy, let's see if we can get a bit closer. The disc has a slight dome in it, and if you look underneath it through the microscope, that is peppered with a matrix of tiny, tiny little holes. And this uh, material here, with the white top, which is actually uh, covering an electrode, is a piezoelectric material, it's a crystal, that when you apply a voltage across it, it actually changes in size. It basically expands and contracts. And in this case, because there's a spring pushing that down against that material, it makes this disc resonate at very, very high frequency. And that basically pumps that uh, air freshener liquid through and sprays it through tiny holes, but atomizes it in the process to a very tiny degree using that ultrasonic energy. This is exactly what was in the WISP unit. The WISP unit actually was interesting because it used, it was a small dome unit about PAM size, the size of a computer mouse. And it took a single AA cell and I think that was part of the problems. It used to do very weird things. It was that I got a few of them and they were just really unreliable. The circuitry just seemed to stop working after a while. But it just, uh, it used this tiny little cartridge here, which has this uh, hard wick coming out. The other one has a hard wick too, the other bottle. It's, it's not like standard soft fluffy wick that's used in the heated ones. And uh, this pressed up in the same way against this exact arrangement, but it only just pinged. It almost seemed to like ping it resonantly. It just used to go make that ting noise. And it put this tiny little wisp of really strong aroma into the air, but it very did so on a sort of not very regular basis. I'm not sure what the time is in this one. I don't know if the strength thing, uh, the strength setting seems to change the duration of the spray. I don't know if it changes the timing as well. But uh, that's fundamental. Is there anything else to discuss in this? It's got the, it atomizes it with the ultrasonic energy. 
it has the circuit board controlling it. This this is going to get ripped off. This is going to get ripped off by the Chinese, and they're going to use an eight-pin chip, and they're just going to get rid of half the circuitry. It's it's inevitable that's going to happen because if you consider they've already got the sort of USB-powered ultrasonic atomizers. It's only, all it's going to take is a bit of extra software in the same chip to actually change the function of that and add the timing so that it just does little bursts of the aroma. So that'll be interesting to see if they do that. But it's an interesting design. And it's interesting, again, that the original WISP unit has been reincarnated with the better technology because these discs, uh, you can even buy these discs on eBay, though they're better actually bought already built into a unit because quite a lot of them, the technology behind these is the uh, mounting of them uh, to keep them square to the uh, wick and also keep the wick spring loaded against them. It's an interesting unit. It works very well. It makes the room absolutely ming. And it does that thing the original Wisp unit did. Instead of uh, trying to just, like the aerosol ones that just... Uh, makes out that loud sort of motorized, motorized and hissing noise or the thermal ones that just put that aroma out continually. Because these things put it out in tiny little bursts, you get a little cloud of aroma. You're walking through the room and suddenly it will sort of hit you in waves. It's, it's quite nice in that way. It provides a good contrast. There's the blue LED incidentally that just uh, makes the tip glow. It's got its own little circuit board and it just presses into the side of the, this plastic holder. So uh, it's an interesting device. It's actually quite well made. Seems quite complex, but I get the feeling that uh, this may actually be just an er early version because it is fairly new. Incidentally, it says Vaporino Option 1 on this 2017-06-12. So it's fairly recent. It's very new product. Yeah, quite smart. <laughs>